Good day, grade 8. I am your teacher, Marie. Good day, grade 8. Now, we're going to discuss a new topic. Let us enjoy watching while learning. Okay, we're going to discuss here is proving two triangles are congruent. We learned from the previous lesson that two triangles are congruent only when their corresponding sides are congruent and their corresponding angles are congruent. Hence, to prove the two triangles are congruent, we must show corresponding sides and angles are congruent. We first recall the following properties about the congruent relations or the congruent. Together with the three postulates, we have the SAS, ASA, SSS, S stands for side and A stands for angles. We can use these properties to prove the, the congruence of the two triangles. And here are the properties of congruence. First, we have the reflexive property. Every geometric object, we have the segment, angle, and even the polygon is congruent to itself. Reflexive property. So, in the other book, the reflexive property can be also called reflective property. Next, we have the symmetric property. If O sub 1 and O sub 2 are two geometric objects, such that O sub 1 is congruent to O sub 2, then O sub 2 is congruent to O sub 1. We have the transitive property and this will be the third properties of congruence. So we have if the transitive property, if we have the O sub 1, O sub 2, and O sub 3 are two geometric objects that have segments, angle, or even the polygon such that O sub 1 is congruent to O sub 2 and O sub 2 is congruent to O sub 3, then O sub 1 is congruent to O sub 3. So if we have the two object which is congruent to itself and the other object is congruent to other object, therefore the first segment or the first angle that we have is congruent to the third angle that we have. That will be the transitive property. So first examples that we have is a triangle ABC is congruent to angle First example that we have is if a tri triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DAF, if so, what postulate, what postulate is needed? So in the given figure, we have the triangle ABC and triangle DAF. So angle A is congruent to angle D and angle B is congruent to angle E. Angle C is congruent to angle F. And here is the answer in the given figure that we have at the given examples. Since the side or the segment ABC and segment EF are not the included side of the marked angle, the ASA, ASA congruent postulate cannot be used. However, since the sum of the interior angle of any triangle is 180 degree, the third angle is both triangle must be 180 degree minus 90 degree minus 50 degree is equal to 40 degree. Therefore, the third angle in the given figures that we have is equal to 40 degree. And now we have the segment BC. So the segment BC is the included side of angle B and angle C. And EF or the segment, segment EF is included side of angle E and angle F. Since we have side BC is congruent to side EF and angle C is congruent to angle F, the AAS congruent postulate applies. So triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF is proven by the use by AAS congruent postulates. So AAS S or that we have the side angle angle or angle angle side congruence theorem. If the two angles and not two included side of one triangles are congruent to the corresponding two angles 
and not included side of the other triangles, then the two triangles are congruent. Here, the side, the given side, must be corresponded to the two angles or the two given angles that we have. So we can use the SAS if we have the two angle given and the side is corresponding to the two angles that we have, okay? That will be the AAS congruence theorems or we have the SAA congruence theorems. Another example, so we have the given angle A is congruent to angle E and angle B is congruent to angle D. Side BC is congruent to DF. We have to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDF. So here, angle A is congruent to angle E and angle B is congruent to angle D. Then the side BC is congruent to side DF. So here is the proof of the given of the given that we have so angle a plus the angle b plus angle c is equal to 180 this is the sum of the insertive angle of a triangle which is equal to 180 degree and angle e plus angle d plus angle f is also 180 degree the same as the reason in the first that we have that the sum of the interior angle of a triangle is equal to 180 degree then angle a plus angle b plus angle c is equal to angle e plus angle d plus angle f this is just a substitution that we have because we shows that angle e plus angle d plus angle f is equal to 180 also so we can substitute the 180 is equal to angle a e 180 is can be substituted by angle a plus angle d plus angle Therefore, we have angle A is congruent to angle E and is given. Angle B is congruent to angle D, given. Angle C is congruent to angle F, subtraction property of equality. Then, side BC is congruent to side DF, it is also given. Therefore, we have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDF by the use of AAS postulate. Okay? Based on the two column proof or the inductive reasoning, we have shown based on the two column proof, we have now the SAA or AAS theorems. So the previous example also shows that we can prove the two triangles are congruent using the concept we have learned previously. Usually, proof in the secondary mathematics can be written in the two-column format, where assertions are stated on the left and the reasons state on the right. Or we have the statement in the left side and the reasons stated on the right side of the two-column proof. However, before writing the two-column proof, we first try to differ determine which part of indicated triangles are justifiably congruent. When we have to prove the two triangles are congruent, look for pair of side or angles in the indicate triangles that are congruent. And once the conditions are satisfied by a certain congruence postulate or theorems, we have the SAS, ASA, or SSS, and we have the last SAA, or AAS. It can be included that the two applicable triangles are congruent. So, when the two triangles are shown to be congruent, it follows that each pair of corresponding pair is also congruent. So, we have the CPCTC or the corresponding part of congruent triangles are congruent. If the two triangles are congruent, then the corresponding part or side and angle are congruent. So let us have another example. Example number three, given that the, we have the side AB is parallel to side DE and side AB is congruent to side DE. Prove that side BE and side AD bisect each other at point C. So here is the proof. So we have the statement and the reason. So number one, we have segment AB is congruent to DE. So it is given in the given 
statement that we have, then angle ABC is congruent to angle EDC. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So, in the given triangles that we have, first that we have indicated is that AB is congruent to DE or the se segment AB is congruent to segment DE. So, so, in the given two triangle, it is formed that it, the two line is parallel to itself. And there is a line which form an interior angle. Therefore, next that we're going to state is the interior angles congruent. Therefore, we have the angle ABC is congruent to angle EDC. And it is stated that the interior angles congruent are congruent. Then we have the angle BAC is congruent to angle DEC. It is also alternate interior angles are congruent. Next, that we have the two angles and one side, we can prove that we have the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC by ASA congruent postulate. But then, we have to prove that the given given two triangle by set to point or uh, by set at C or point C. Therefore, it cannot be stopped in this given postulate that we have proven that the two triangle is A as A congruent postulate. So we have the segment BC is congruent to segment AC by the use of CPTC or we have the corresponding part of congruent triangles is congruent. Then AC is congruent to DC, CPTC also or the corresponding part of congruent triangle is congruent. Then we have proved that segment BE and AD bisect each other at point C by the definition of the segment bisector. Another example is example number 4. In the given triangle ABC, prove that if we have segment AB is congruent to segment AC, then angle B is congruent to angle C. So here is the proof. We have the segment AB is congruent to segment AC. It is given. Then, angle A is congruent to angle A. Reflexive property. It is one of the properties of congruence. Then, we have triangle ABC congruent to triangle ABC by ASA as congruent postulate. We have the side angle side. Therefore, we have the ASA congruent postulate. Then, angle B is congruent to angle C by corresponding part of congruence triangle is congruent or the CPTC. Therefore, we have proved the triangle ABC. Next example number 5 given the triangle A. Uh, next example number 5 given the segment AB is congruent to segment AC and D, E, and F are the midpoint of AB, AC, and BC respectively. Proof we have to prove that triangle D, we have to prove that triangle BDF, triangle, triangle BDF is congruent to triangle CEF. And here is the figures of the triangle ABC and the triangle DF and triangle CEF. Then here is the proof. So we have segment BC is congruent to segment CE. D and E F are mid midpoint of the congruent segment A B and A C, and here is the proof. So, segment A B is congruent, and here is the proof. We have the statement and reason. First, we have the segment B C is congruent to segment C E. It is a reason that we have D and F are midpoints of congruent segments. AB and AC. So we have angle B is congruent to angle C. Isosceles triangle to rest. Then ABF or the side BF is congruent to side CF. F is the midpoint of BC. And we have the triangle BDF is congruent to triangle CEF by S. A as congruent postulate. Thank you. 
Enjoy watching while learning. This is your teacher, Miss Marimar F. Figalang.